Good morning, this is Big Bird again. I thought I'd give one last video on my accessories before uh, things get really busy uh, later on this summer and towards the uh, beginning of hunting season. Uh, it never fails that orders keep coming in, piling in right before uh, hunting season and it impacts my ability to go hunting. So I thought that uh, this year I tried something a little different and ask people if they're interested in something to perhaps you know order a little early so I don't get overrun with stuff because uh, I like to hunt as well. Uh, so towards that end I'm going to talk about uh, my existing accessories as well as uh, uh, introduce a couple of new ones that I, that I haven't shown in the past. Uh, so we'll start. This is my my RTM that I've own now for ever since the RTMs came out and I've been very successful in hunting with it and I uh, just really enjoy the bow uh, and I uh, want to I'll just go from top to bottom one of my um, popular accessories is the, my steric design uh, it's a universal design it'll work on RTMs, R20s, R9s, R15s as well as the small bows like the R26, uh, R29, and R29X. Uh, I'll be the first to admit it's more attractive for the smaller bows uh, because <clears throat> they're so small that uh, it's really nice to be able to keep the you know, broadheads out of the dirt if you're in a blind. And most folks that buy those bows are looking for maneuverability. It's also uh, pretty cool and it's totally snap-on. You don't need any tools to put it on or take it off. Uh, it's got these finger adjustable fingers that just pop in and out and you've got neural nuts here that you can adjust. There's a video that I have that talks about it in detail. And then I have my uh, top mount uh, <coughs> quiver holder. Uh, what makes this unique is that unlike the Raven quiver holder, you can easily remove it from one hand. <coughs> And you can it pop it back with one hand. I mean, it's it's got a lighter spring, but yet it's it's very sturdy. It won't come out. It can't be rocked back and forth, uh, but just a, a, a tiny bit. And it's universal. It'll work on an RTS, R20s, R26s, R29s, 29Xs. It'll work on uh, most of the most popular Ravens. Uh, <clears throat> and there's uh, a left-hand version for those lefties that mounts on this side. I also have my bubble level that's specifically designed for uh, Ravens and even with the Oracle X on, on my Raven um, I prefer to use the bubble level. This is a little larger bubble level than normal and it's designed such that you only see the bubble and very little else so it's very easy to center it even when it gets dim light. Um, it's again ambidextrous. I have a version for a left hand shooter that goes over here. Of course, his quiver would be on this side. And this is the right hand version. It's purposely located where it's at so that you can see it without taking your scope, uh, your eye out of the scope. Uh, <coughs> moving down further, I have my Vocal X scope rail extension. This is really designed for those tall, lanky folks like myself that have to move the uh, <clears throat> the Oracle X mount all the way forward uh, to be able to get the eye relief that you need. And uh, I found when you do that and you kind of leave it that far forward, you can get a little bit of uh, wiggle in the thing because of that long moment arm. So anyway, I designed this lightweight scope rail extension to get out of carbon fiber nylon. It locks in place over the bridge just exactly like the uh, the Raven scope rail on the smaller bows like the R26 and R29 and it anchors back onto the Oracle X uh, mount right where it uh, joins the Raven scope rail. And it really helps to stabilize this thing. Uh, one of my newest products is my Oracle X Stro Lever. A uh, fine gentleman uh, on Cross One Nation suggested that uh, I try to make one of these and it turned out to be one of my easiest projects. It's not much, very difficult to make one. And basically I designed it so that it went straight up its own 5X. You flip it 
all the way forward as far as you go, you roll 7x. So if you're shooting distance, you can quickly flip it to 7. But normally I keep it straight up in about 5x. That's one thing the screw that mounts it in place. Um, it's got skull ridges to uh, match the ridges on the Oracle X. And once you tighten that screw, you got it. It takes about 30 seconds to install it. Um, let's see. Moving further down, this is my Oracle X range button holder. It's specifically made for R10, R20, R9, and R15. You don't really need it on the, the smaller crossbows because the forearm is designed differently. You can just zip tie it right to the, the grid in the forearm. But on the longer bows, it uh, is not like that at all. It's very difficult to mount it. So uh, even with zip ties, multiple zip ties. So I designed a holder. So it's got a flange up here with two flathead screws that latch into this finger guard. You can move it forward or, or back depending on the length of your the size of your hand and the length of your finger. You can even make fine tune adjustments here because there's two holes for the zip tie. And as you can see, I got mine set so my finger is right there. When I get when I put my eye on that scope, I don't have to uh, search for it. It's right there, um, and it's very strong. It's not going to go anywhere, and that's important because you, it doesn't have the local X range button holder does not have much travel. Okay, um, then we can move back to talk about my um, bird mount. Um, this is how I got started kind of in making accessories. And the bird mount is just uh, my rear crank handle relocator. And this is just, uh, in my opinion, indispensable on a Raven. And what makes mine so different than others that you've seen is it does not use the Raven holder at all. The end result of that is it's much lighter weight spring, yet it's designed to snap in tight, very tight, but you can quickly bring it on here and then just quickly turn it around, spin it, pop it back. Uh, it's fully ambidextrous. You can move this over to this side and, and uh, keep the knob up, top, up uh, to the top uh, by merely rotating the, hand, the, the internal portion here using these two screws. There's a video, a separate video on how to do that. Uh, and it's on YouTube as well. And uh, I mean, this one, this one's probably two and a half years old. Look at it, looks like brand new. This stuff, can't really scratch it. Uh, and it just lasts, lasts, lasts. And pervious to sun's rays, uh, and pervious to the water or anything like that. I mean, you don't have to worry about any rusting. I use stainless hardware whenever I can. So anyway, um, that's been, uh, extremely popular and most people start out by getting my bird mount and then they work into other accessories. Um, I'm 6'6", got long arms, uh, that's why they call me Big Bird and so I have a I have first thing I had, one of the first things I had to do is make a length of four extension for my R10. Uh, this is the longest version, it has a, a inch thick uh, white line recoil pad and a spacer that can be obtained in one inch, inch and a quarter, and inch and a half uh, widths for those really long arm folks like myself. And it just gives you a totally different feel. Uh, people that are tall, I mean a lot of people that are normal height, they don't have they don't have any idea what it's like to grab a gun if you're if you're tall and uh, have a long neck. Your your eye is right on top of the scope when it's back here. So you've got to push the scope forward and you've got to do something to bring it back so when it comes up, it's just right there. Uh, I also make a, a uh, shorter version uh, of this. This is my one inch spacer uh, that most people wind up, if they need a leaf of pull extension, they usually ask for this uh, because that's usually all you, the average person would need. Uh, and it's designed to work with the standard Raven butt pad. It's a barrier to make though because and design because it's 
it's concave on one side, convex on the other, curved on both ends, and just a real challenge uh, to fit the uh, the raisin stock. But I've been selling these now for probably two years, so uh, it's no stranger to me to make one any any more. And they, uh, as you can see, they look pretty pretty decent. Also, make a couple uh, really popular tools that I haven't mentioned before. This is my string latch release tool. It's a very simple little tool, but it's designed to slide in between the rail here. Uh, it fits in there and slides like that. And when you uh, when you tune your bow and you drop the string latch down on there, and then you say, "Oh crap! I got to take it back off now." So I normally have to shoot it. No, you don't. You can uh, decock your crossbow. <clears throat> make sure it's decocked. Uh, you merely Take and load an arrow, flip your safety off, and you merely slide this in very slowly. I think uh, Rifle Nuts got uh, a good video of it on YouTube. And you just slide it in until it clicks. And uh, when it, once it clicks, that's releasing the, the trigger latch, and you can just pull it back off the string. Uh, this is my knock center tool. Some of you who are long time. Uh, members of Crossbow Nation are very familiar with this. This tool has uh, multiple purposes, but one of its key <coughs> purposes is functions is if you've got a new aftermarket string, like a double serve string from Archie Shack or GS, I mean, both of those companies make outstanding strings, and I highly recommend either one of them. Uh, this is a GS, GS string that's on this, uh, this bow now. And it's been on there for a year and it's still like new. But it's double serve. That's one reason you have an extended lifetime on, on your center serving. But in order to put the knock notch in the center of the string, once you've got your cams tied, uh, this is what this little tool is used for. But again, it slides in between the rail. It's very difficult for me to do with the scope rail extension on there. You lift your string up and it pops under your string. And it's hard to show that, but anyway, it's like that. And then you have a coarse wheel and a fine wheel. Fine wheel has the, the rib that runs uh, parallel to the circumference of the wheel. And the coarse wheel has no rib in the middle. Uh, and what you do, <clears throat> you use the coarse wheel first and snap it on the string and rotate it around about a dozen times. It's got a, a neural wheel so you can grip it with your thumb. And the idea is you, you, you're slowly working a, a notch for the knock uh, in the center of the string. And then once you've done that, you put the fine wheel in there. It's got a smaller diameter, and you do it all over again. And by the time you're done, um, you've got a definitive knock notch there that makes it much easier to snap the arrow uh, onto your, your double serve string. I mean, you can use it for the Raven single serve string, but you really don't need it to be true with you. What I do for the Raven string is merely drop the string latch down on the string, and just with the bow and cock, just pop it in a bunch of times. Because uh, that's a, that's a single serve string, and it's a little easier to put that notch there. Uh, it's also got a, a dual function, which is pretty cool. Whoops. What's pretty cool is that uh, you can use this little tool to, as a tuning tool. If your <clears throat> if your uh, cable stretch a little differently, and one side, it, say this right cam is in time, but the left one isn't, you'll find that your knock notch is going to shift slightly left or right, and that's a no-no for a Raven because you want that. When you cock that raven in that, and you squeeze that trigger, you want that arrow to go right straight down the middle of this channel. And um, so you need, a, you need to fix your timing. But that little tool will quickly tell you if that notch is, has shifted. Um, it also can tell you if the knock, if your raven knock is slipping. Because you can <clears throat> insert this in here, pop the arrow on there. It'll make sure that your arrow goes in the center, but your string latch is now, uh, your trigger box is still down here. And now <clears throat> you can remove this 
and just grab the end of that knot a little bit and slide it. See if it'll slide left and right. Don't force it, but just see if it'll slide a little left and right. If it does, then your center serving needs to be replaced. Okay, that's, uh, I think that's in a nutshell about it. Uh, oh, oh yeah, uh, I've got a, uh, my wife cued me, I also make a trigger shoe, and uh, uh, I do that because normally uh, the trigger, as you know, for brave members know that when the, uh, <clears throat> when you snap the uh, trigger box on the string and cock your bow back, it's going to rock this trigger fork about like that. But for folks like yourself, that puts that trigger way back. I have over the years learned the most accurate way to shoot. I just give you a little hint that I use. But take your finger and hold it up like this. Take, take one finger and watch what happens when you try to punch the trigger. See how easy this punch trigger? Now take your middle finger and put it beside your trigger finger. And now try to punch it. You can't punch it because the friction of your middle finger prevents your your index finger from punching. So I always <clears throat> design my trigger position so I can get both fingers in there like so. And now I, I can't punch the trigger. So <clears throat> you learn to just do nothing but focus on the dot. That's why I use a small dot like you see here. Uh, I put Raven cables. <clears throat> on this uh, bow this morning because <clears throat> I've been so impressed with them. Uh, I have a, my buddy has an R10 that's got Raven, uh, new Raven cables on, and they're rock steady. So, <clears throat> so, you know, for Oracle X, the ideal thing about it, if you change out cables and strings, all you gotta do is go <clears throat> get your 20 yard zero set again and you're good to go. Well, I, I was shooting behind to, <clears throat> about an inch high and an inch to the, to the left. Uh, so I made the course adjustment and got it close to the dot and then used my little target with a half inch dot and now got tight on the dot and using nothing but this long bipod. First shot, <coughs> touched the dot, but a little off, so I made a fine adjustment and bingo. I'm, I'm just a tad high, but I do know that these cables are going to stretch just a little bit and that should bring it right down to the center punch of the dot. Um, so anyway, um, uh, I'm anxious to see how well these Raven cables will hold up. I did not want to change out the string because my GAS string is, is still flawless. And uh, there's just no sense in changing that out. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's about it. I've already spent too much time on this video. But uh, thanks for watching, and you guys have a wonderful summer. Bye now.